good? Okay, excellent. <clears throat> All right, to start off, obviously we're here to talk about peripheral neuropathy. I always like starting my lectures off to know where my audience is coming from. I've treated a lot of neuropathy patients, so I probably uh, will have a good idea on kind of what you've been through. But if you wouldn't mind just briefly telling me uh, maybe the one thing that you're hoping to learn tonight, and, and we'll make sure that we try to cover that. I just, um, when we're in, in a, for things about possible causes, uh, I have fam and family members, extended family members who have had this. Okay. And uh, I thought learning symptoms and what sure. to be aware of was a good thing. Absolutely. Things can learn from that. Absolutely. How about yourself? Uh, really to learn or uh, eliminate reasons why I might have normal spinal muscular. Okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Definitely. How about yourself, man? Sir? Learning from diabetes. Mm -hmm. How long have you been, uh, uh, how long have you had diabetic peripheral neuropathy? 25 years. Okay. Yeah. Full numbness? Not good. Hmm? Uh, the feet that long? or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, the feet probably 15. Okay. Full numbness? Do you have uh, the burning as well? No. No. Okay. Just, just a lack of sensation. Okay. Okay. How about yourself, man? Mm -hmm. that could be a cause. Oh, yeah. And also about the cholesterol. Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. Sure. Okay. Sure. We will talk a lot about that, and, and you'll learn a good bit, and, and you may really question whether you should take that medication even more after tonight. How about yourself? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sure, sure. He's diabetic, but he, he broke his tailbone falling off the rope. So sure. It's mainly in his feet, but I think he's got burning in his hands. Sure, sure. So you've got neuropathy in your hands, and that's or in your feet that have spread to your hands. Okay, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. He worked on a line. Okay. Know, yeah, sure. Um, okay. okay. Sure, sure. Could, yeah. you know, sure. Know. Well, I'll ask a couple of generic questions in a minute once we get through you, and then I'll try to get a better gauge. How about yourself? Yeah. Yeah. And how about your problem, sir? Absolutely. We've got a really new school of thought and really state-of-the-art technology uh, here. And, and uh, so we'll really talk about both um, and, and really some of the thought processes behind neuropathy and, and the treatments that we've done with patients really um, are something that uh, our traditional medical providers aren't even looking at. And it's, it's a shame, but, uh, you know, just to get a handle on that, uh, everyone who has some form of neuropathy here, who has been to a neurologist and had a test? or been diagnosed with it? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. Those of you who have uh, been diagnosed with neuropathy, have you been on any sort of medications for the nerve pain before? No. Okay. Yeah. Yes. No. Okay. Okay. Yourself, sir? No. Okay. 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 Sure. They didn't even tell you what was wrong. Yeah. They just. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. And, and it's possible that uh, they diagnosed you and they didn't tell you. It's possible that they didn't diagnose you, but they just figured that's what it was. I mean, we'll talk a little bit about what neuropathy is tonight. Um, it, it, I'm glad to see that we don't have a lot of uh, the burning patients. I, I treat a lot of those, and I mean, you guys are actually in pretty good company here because the pain can be a lot worse. It really could. And we'll talk about that a little bit tonight. Um, that, that's a perfect example of, of kind of what we sometimes deal with. Imagine. Yes, absolutely. We may have one more person coming in, but I'm going to start going and we'll just get them to join in a minute. 
Um, once again, my practice is Lake Norman Health and Wellness. I am a chiropractor, but I specialize in treating things that are not typically what you would consider chiropractic uh, conditions. Uh, neuropathy is a perfect example of that. Peripheral neuropathy is something that we've treated for about four years now uh, very effectively. Additionally, we treat chronic pain conditions. Uh, sometimes they will be of the spinal variety, which is what you would think when you think of chiropractor. You think back, neck, headaches. We do a lot of work with uh, disc injuries, people who are looking at needing surgery and they don't want to go that route. They've got a pinched nerve in one leg and they want a non-surgical solution. We also do a lot of treatment with uh, different conditions like thyroid dysfunction, uh, diabetes, fibromyalgia. So we're able to help a lot of other problems that you typically wouldn't think of as relating to chiropractic. Good evening. With that being said, Part of the reason why we help those patients is because we look at the body from a different point of view. And it's really not that big of a stretch when we talk about what, what is a chiropractor doing treating thyroid or neuropathy or diabetes. We're looking for natural ways to get the body to work properly. That may involve blood work. That may involve diagnostic tests. That may involve uh, looking at the brain or different parts of the body in order to figure out what is wrong. And so with that, you know, we really we, we have a unique approach towards our diagnosis, and then a unique approach towards our treatment that is probably unlike what you've you've if you've been to a chiropractor before what you've experienced. Uh, just to let you know, I am part of a group of doctors nationwide. We total close to a thousand that literally have thousands of uh, years of experience between us, and we treat the hardest cases that you can imagine. So what we're here tonight, neuropathy, is typically the kind of thing, and we'll talk a lot about the medical treatment of it and and what's lacking with that and, and where people usually get stuck with. But if you happen to have a family member, and the reason I tell you this, if you have a family member or a friend who lives elsewhere and they have a problem, we can probably find them a doctor who can help them. So definitely don't feel afraid to ask us, okay? All right, just to get a couple ground rules out of the way, uh, with every lecture that I do, I always want to talk about uh, a couple uh, kind of gut check realities when we're dealing with helping your uh, condition and really making a change in how you feel with your life. First and foremost, if you are looking to improve your health, and once again, the crowd that I'm dealing with tonight doesn't have the positive symptoms of neuropathy, at least it sounds like, the burning pain, okay? So that's good. But if you are looking to make a change in your health, no matter how minor or how severe, you have to be committed to doing something about it. And your commitment level has to be at a 10. What I'm really talking about is if you are a smoker, okay, and you're told you have cancer, you have to quit smoking, or that's it. It's that kind of a commitment that we're talking about. If you're not willing to do what it takes in front of the obvious or in front of the, the hard truth, then you're not going to get better, okay? You have to be prepared to make lifestyle changes. I'm going to talk a lot about the different things that contribute to your neuropathy, that contribute to chronic pain. We're going to talk about foods. We're going to talk about stressors. You have to be prepared to make changes to your lifestyle. You also have to take responsibility for your own health. You guys did the first thing and the smarter thing by coming out to a lecture to learn more about the condition yourself. Do not rely on what any one doctor tells you. Research it yourself. Understand that, you know, you have to, nobody's going to get you better except except for yourself making the first step. With that being said, a lot of what we're going to talk about with our treatment is unfortunately not covered by insurance, and even Medicare, and unfortunately mostly Medicare because Medicare doesn't cover really what they should cover. We all know that, but uh, really what we're looking at is in a traditional medical society, insurance covers sick care, they cover diagnosis to give you a prescription, to give you a surgery. If it's preventative, if it's natural, if it involves things that don't involve a drug, they don't really pay a lot of it. And so patients in my office have to be prepared to spend a good bit of their own money to get well. It could be 200 to 300 a month depending on what we're dealing with. If I proceed with an exam on you, your spouse or significant other must be present when I go over the results of that exam at our report of findings. We're talking about your health. We're talking about 
lifestyle changes, steps that are needed to make a change to that health, and it's very important that we have a significant other there at that appointment. With that being said, I won't judge anybody. If anybody doesn't want to stay for the lecture, I'm going to get a quick sip of water, and we're going to get started, but feel free. If, if you want to leave, there's not a problem at all. And I'm back. All right. So what is peripheral neuropathy? First and foremost, neuropathy is a condition that affects the peripheral nerves. What we're talking about are the hands and feet mostly. It can even spread in some cases to the uh, face, to the, uh, to the thorax. Uh, I've had patients that have had neuropathy in the abdominal area uh, because of a surgery. I've had uh, neuropathy. Uh, if you've heard of shingles, that is a form of neuropathy, okay? What we're talking about is a disorder of the peripheral nerves, though. Peripheral neuropathy as a condition is going to be systemic. What that means is it's not going to be isolated to one little area. This will affect a couple of you that you kind of mentioned you've got these pains uh, in certain areas. It's also going to be bilateral. So as we talk about neuropathy, one of the things that I do with my diagnosis is I really look to help identify that. Are we dealing with a systemic peripheral problem? Are we dealing with a bilateral problem where it's affecting both sides of the body? If we're not, that helps me rule out a lot of conditions. That helps me identify why, for instance, one leg may be hurting, okay? And, and that helps us figure out what's causing it better. Um, you know, neuropathy means a disease or abnormality of the nerves. It's not a very good definition, uh, but, but we can just think of it generally as any damage to the nervous system. Peripheral neuropathy can be very crippling. I mentioned that earlier. It affects approximately 27 million Americans. That's actually a pretty good percentage. About 7% of our total population has neuropathy. Additionally, nearly 60% of all diabetics suffer from neuropathy. This is very important because diabetics should be screened. In fact, the American Diabetic Association now says that if you are diagnosed with diabetes, you should be screened for nerve damage. It can, it's that common. But you can have peripheral neuropathy and not be diabetic. This is also very important to understand. Um, most patients who have peripheral neuropathy are over the age of 50. If you look to your left and right, for the most part, we're going to fit in with the ideal demographic of that. And it really, that, that sucks because you should be enjoying your life to the fullest. It's, it's you know, it's your golden years. And, you, and most people who have peripheral neuropathy can't. They're in pain and they don't get to enjoy their lives the most. The pain can be pretty severe. I want you to just look at these pictures real quick. And, you know, we can kind of look and see a gangrenous foot. Uh, doesn't look very nice. It really doesn't. Now, these, these images are here to really reiterate how severe the pain can be. Um, there's actually a, uh, I've seen cases of uh, a Border Patrol agent in New Mexico who actually committed suicide because the pain was so hard. I mean, we're, we're talking for some patients, severe chronic pain. I've had the pleasure of treating successfully many of those patients in my practice. I've seen a lot of them come through here. And you know, once again, the burning sensation of neuropathy is not something that we want. This is very important for every one of you, though, because not, not one of you really mentioned that you had it. Neuropathy is a progressive disorder. That means that just because you don't have those symptoms, it doesn't mean they're not going to progress. You're not going to develop them. And I'll talk about the order of kind of what happens with neuropathy in a couple minutes. But the seven typical signs that we see, numbness, a lot of you have that, burning feet, cramping, sharp electric pains, pain while walking, difficulty sleeping. Uh, the numbness seems to be worse at night for most patients. Additionally, a prickling or tingling sensation. It can also spread into the hands and the same kinds of symptoms can be in the hands. It can be the point where you're trying to button your coat and you can't feel the buttons. You have difficulty doing simple tasks because of the numbness in your hands. Peripheral neuropathy is caused by three major cat uh, areas uh, of dysfunction, but, but there's several other things that can also lead to it. The biggest things that cause peripheral neuropathy, number one, diabetes. Okay, well, diabetic peripheral neuropathy. Has everyone here had a blood sugar check at some point and had their A1C levels looked at? Okay, so that's a big thing to look at and see, you know, if you have neuropathy, if your A1C is above 
Now here's a little tidbit I'm going to give you, okay? 6.3 is diabetes, all right? If your A1C is above 5.5, then you have what's called insulin resistance. The occurrence or prevalence of peripheral neuropathy with insulin resistance, or what you would commonly call prediabetes, is the exact same as it is with diabetes. So even a little blood sugar problem, you're at risk for neuropathy. Additionally, certain medications, including chemotherapy drugs, including steroids, including statin medications, can actually directly contribute to your neuropathy. Additionally, degenerative disc disease, especially in the lumbar spine, can also lead to the peripheral nerve damage over time. Some additional causes of neuropathy include frostbite. We usually don't have to deal with that too much in the Carolinas, although this winter may be an exception. Uh, other systemic or metabolic problems, what we're talking about are autoimmune conditions. And we'll talk a lot about what that means and why that's important. Thyroid problems can lead to neuropathy. There's a good bit of research supporting the link between those two conditions. Additionally, some hereditary disorders, uh, Charcot-Marie Tooth or Frederick's Ataxia are two of them that can also contribute to neuropathy. Now, this little thing kind of talks about a whole big list of a lot of the things that we've seen associated with neuropathy. The biggest ones that we're going to really hit on tonight are going to be diabetes, certain drugs, and autoimmune conditions. And it's actually my belief and my understanding through my training and what I've seen with patients that every single one of those does associate with an autoimmune condition at some point or another, even the diabetics. So we're going to talk a lot about what that means and what we want to do to help identify and correct that. A couple other quick things. Alcoholic abuse can definitely lead to neuropathy. Uh, you can see uh, excuse me, some dietary deficiency, uh, deficiencies. Uh, if you've been tested through your doctors, they probably look for B12 deficiencies. They're not that common, but they can lead to neuropathy, and that's something that, that often gets checked. Additionally, if we look up there, uh, certain infectious diseases, um, Lyme's disease is an example, uh, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, I've got a patient I'm treating who had that, who had neuropathy as a result, uh, as well as some exposure to certain uh, toxic, uh, hmm? mm -hmm. sure, yeah. uh, but certain uh, industrial agents. Uh, I've seen patients who've had Agent Orange exposure from being in Vietnam and developed neuropathy as a result. So we're going to talk about statin drugs first, okay? Um, yeah, yeah. Last year, pretty calm. Two, three years ago, everywhere you look, Newsweek, Business Week, Time Magazine, statin drugs were in the news. Should we take them? Are they safe for us? What we do know, and, and actually we know a lot, so I'm going I'm to kind of talk about the basics of statins, but we're going to talk about what that research showed. And really, so what happens when you get your cholesterol checked and your doctor says, hey, you need to go on a statin medication. The statins are inhibiting the formation of cholesterol. That's why they're effective at lowering those cholesterol levels. What happens, though, is cholesterol is used to synthesize something called coenzyme Q10. Has anyone here heard of CoQ10 before? Okay. It's a supplement, and if you're on a statin drug, then you really need to know this, because what happens is CoQ10 is necessary to generate something called ATP. ATP is the energy. It's, it's what's actually required for any cell to function properly. Once you hit, oh, what is it, age 20, your ability to produce ATP drops about a percent per year. Okay, so we're talking, you know, uh, 40, 50 percent, and, you know, and, and, and maybe in, in some of you hear that, you, you can't produce ATP properly at all. Now, let's take it a step further. So older people have a decreased potential to make ATP, but then if you take the statin medications, it's going to suppress your ATP production further. It prevents CoQ10 from working, which prevents the ATP from getting produced. And what actually happens then is, is the nerves in our body can't maintain their electrochemical gradient. Your neurons fire, and they need that ATP to fire properly. If they can't do that, then the brain perceives this, and the end result is numbness or tingling. You know, we get these exact different dysfunctions in certain types of nerve fibers, whether they're uh, the sensory fibers or the motor fibers, depending on what's affected, you feel that damage. So 
Statin drug use directly contributes to the progression of peripheral neuropathy. And actually research, and this was in the journal Neurology, it's a pretty big journal, okay? In 2002, they stated that taking statins increased your risk of peripheral neuropathy 1,600%. They block those CoQ10 pathways. And uh, so if any of you are on a statin and you've got neuropathy, you need a minimum of 200 to 600 milligrams of CoQ10 daily to overcome that. Now, if you've ever been to the drugstore and looked at the price of CoQ10, 600 milligram CoQ10 is gonna cost you about $90 a month. It's not a cheap supplement. So the bigger question becomes, why are we taking our statin drug, right? You know, one more time. Long-term exposure to statins substantially increases the risk of polyneuropathy or peripheral neuropathy. Statin medication is something that has risks and benefits associated with it. If your cholesterol is under 300, you have not had a stroke or a heart attack, there is no documented increased risk of health or a heart attack or mortality with that cholesterol. There's no reason to take a statin drug. So if you're at 200, if you're at 220, if you're at 240, okay, those numbers do not increase your risk of mortality anymore. Take it a step further. Let's talk about what you're actually doing when you have that elevated cholesterol, okay? If I see a patient who has cholesterol that is above 200, that has HDLs that are low, that has uh, LDL above 100 or triglycerides you know, above 150, we see these numbers that are abnormal, I'm thinking, thyroid problems. I'm thinking blood sugar problems. So why not work on improving those conditions instead of just taking the supplement, taking the drug to try to mask the symptoms? Let's look for the cause of the problems. With peripheral neuropathy, there are two types of symptoms that people have. Everyone here who has neuropathy has the first type. They're called negative signs or negative symptoms. Negative doesn't mean uh, good or, 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 or bad. Uh, it's just it's the, what comes first. And what happens is you actually you lose something. So you lose the ability to feel a sensation. You lose the ability to perceive where you are in space with your balance. Only after a time, progressively, do the nerves damage, uh, get damaged more, and they progress to the positive symptoms of neuropathy. And once again, positive doesn't mean good. Positive means your brain perceives this damage and starts warning you about it. But the way it warns you is with tingling, burning, stabbing, electric shooting pains. So the positive symptoms of neuropathy are a progressive symptom that occurs down the road when, in anybody who has neuropathy. So if your nerves are damaged at a certain point, that's what we have to worry about. Typically you'll see the feet affected first and you'll see hypersensitivity in the feet with a neuropathy patient, and you'll see hyposensitivity, low sensation in the hands. That's a typical distribution. A lot of times I'll see the tips of the fingers will be sensitive though, uh, real sensitive to touch. Uh, and, and I've seen patients even who develop with the burning or electric shooting pain, it progresses even more beyond that. So diabetes, the second big cause of neuropathy. So insulin is a hormone that's produced by the pancreas and it's there to help control blood sugar. It can be caused by, uh, diabetes can be caused by too little insulin, too much insulin, or both. And like I said earlier, diabetes leads to a significant portion of neuropathy. With diabetes, what we want to keep in mind is, you know, we're talking about insulin resistance where your blood sugar loses its ability to be regulated properly. The insulin has to get kicked in more and more and more. And we're talking with type two diabetes, we're talking where the pancreas is producing more and more insulin or it can't produce enough and that insulin can't go anywhere. There's a resistance to it. So what happens is it takes more to do the same job. And the end result is decreased circulation, decreased or uh, decreased nerve pain, or excuse me, decreased nerve function and eventual pain with that. But also we see a lot of other things associated with diabetes. And, and it's something that we really wanna keep in mind here as we're talking specifically about neuropathy you know, it's enough just to say, you know, if, if you're diabetic, then, you know, we want to address the symptoms of that diabetes, the neuropathy itself, 
but we really want to address what's causing your diabetes. Now, a couple things that come to mind are antibodies to the pancreas. So your pancreas can actually be attacked by your body, and it can lead to decreased resistance in uh, insulin throughout the body. Your thyroid regulates your blood sugar metabolism, and problems with your thyroid can lead to diabetes. The foods you eat can directly impact those same areas. And we're not just talking about sweets. We're talking about certain types of inflammatory foods that can cause your immune system to break down. We'll talk about that again in a little bit. So the medical treatment of neuropathy typically is associated with pain medication. If any of you have heard of any of these medicines, what I typically see in my office, Lyrica, Gabapentin, that's Neurontin, Cymbalta or Amitriptyline, uh, sometimes you'll see morphine or oxycodone. You'll get into some harder narcotics. Uh, occasionally, we'll even see a newer thing is a spinal cord stimulator. It's like a TENS unit implanted into your spine uh, or into your stomach. And the problem is it, it doesn't work. None of these things work. The reason these drugs don't work is because they're trying to block the sensation of pain. They're doing nothing to correct where it's coming from. What we're talking about as far as the causes of neuropathy and really all chronic health conditions are some certain very specific similarities. We're talking about oxygen deficits. Your body loses uh, its ability to transport and utilize oxygen effectively, a circulatory problem. We're talking about neurological misfirings, whether it's from CoQ10 and ATP not firing properly, or it's from a stroke, or it's from in your immune system attacking the nerves. You see metabolic imbalances. Blood sugar, obviously, diabetes comes to mind, but also cortisol. Now, cortisol is made by our adrenal gland, and it also regulates insulin. It does a lot more than that, though. Cortisol can directly affect what our brain perceives. So what we're talking about are, are different imbalances that can go right to the side of where we feel that pain and make it worse. Hormone problems. Uh, menopause, uh, low estrogen levels, testosterone imbalances, andropause. I've got a patient that we're talking to right now who uh, he's been on testosterone shots. He's autoimmune and he's been, you know, the doctor hasn't taken all these injections, doing nothing for him. You know, it's, uh, but we see these hormone imbalances that lead to the pain, make it worse. Anemias. Anemias are important because blood, uh, your red blood cells transport all these nutrients. And if there's an anemia, and we're not just talking iron, problems here. We're talking about your cells, you know, your red blood cells inability to move nutrients properly, then it's going to lead to decreased function. Once again, your, auto, your immune system can be attacking itself. It's called an autoimmune attack. Uh, and you can see imbalances in the brain. And this is a big area with all of you guys with the neuropathy. There's an area of the brain, and we should talk about it in just a second, but that directly uh, deals with sensation. And these imbalances can lead to what we feel. Now you see this list of conditions on the left. You've got neuropathy on there, but you've also got fibromyalgia, vertigo, you've got uh, rheumatoid arthritis, neck pain, irritable bowel syndrome, thyroid dysfunction, stenosis, insomnia, digestive disorders, all these different things, they all relate together. And all these different problems, it's, they're all common together. So you, know, you can have one problem, your symptom is, is lack of sensation in your feet, but it, actually if you really think hard, and you know what? I actually do use reflux medication, and I do have this problem and that problem, and I don't sleep that well. And all of a sudden, a pattern develops where your body is breaking down, and that neuropathy is a warning sign that something's not working right with you. What we're talking about in the brain are different areas that deal with sensation. It's called the parietal lobe. It's right on the side. You can see right here is where we're marking it. But that's the primary area that we're dealing with, as well as the area in the back of the brain called the cerebellum. The cerebellum deals with balance, posture, equilibrium. And it's what's really important because when you lose the sensation to feel, let me give a little uh, example of, of something I see pretty commonly. And, and obviously, we're not at the coast, but if you go to Myrtle Beach, okay, and you have to park across the street from, from the beach, and you're walking, and you don't have shoes on, and it's July 14th, and it's 110 degrees out, but you don't feel a thing because of the neuropathy. 
you don't know how hot the concrete is. That's what we're talking about, okay? Now, imagine if you were waking up at 2 in the morning because you hear a dog barking and you step out of bed and you've got that same lack of sensation and you're not sure where you are. You could fall, right? Okay, so we're talking balance. That's actually one of the number one causes of death in the elderly are fractures from falling. So this sensory loss all of a sudden becomes a little bit more important than just not really feeling my feet. You, know, you, you lose your balance, you lose your ability to move around properly, and it becomes a lot more important. So with the brain, there's a nerve signal, but there's also a chemical signal. And this is important to keep in mind because the brain can't communicate with the glands if those signals aren't there. What we're talking about are neurotransmitters, dopamine, GABA, serotonin, acetylcholine, these different neurotransmitters commonly are associated with things like depression or anxiety or concentration, but they actually have a lot more to do with how the brain is communicating overall. There are communication centers and they can break down and it can lead to the sensation that we're feeling. When those signals aren't working right, what we end up seeing is that brain overfires. <coughs> we're going to call it an overfiring mesencephalon, okay? When the brain overfires, these different symptoms associate with it. Some of the symptoms are neuro, uh, nerve uh, numbness or tingling. It could be headaches, especially maybe, uh, maybe headaches every morning that you get, but that they wear off. It could be insomnia, chronic fatigue. Uh, it could be chronic infections. You could have fibromyalgia or muscle pain, uh, constipation or diarrhea. Uh, it could be your heart racing. So a lot of these different things that happen, happen because your brain all of a sudden is overfiring now. How many of you have had blood tests done? Show of hands, okay. Have you all been told your lab tests are normal? No? No? Okay. <laughs> we'll talk about why <laughs> as we get through. But if you've been told your lab tests are normal, what we're really talking about is, and this is one of those big things of, you know, what we do in our office versus what's traditional medicine. And for the diabetic, this is really important, okay? When you go to lab, I use LabCorp to do my testing. When you go and you get blood tests done, they're going to give me a reference range. And that's the reference range that your doctors look at to see if you're normal or not. And if there's not an H for high or an L for low, then it means that you're normal, right? Okay, wrong. Those labs use bell curves. It's a statistical analysis, nothing more. They're based on unhealthy people. So who goes and gets blood work done? Sick people, you know, especially if you're going every month. If you're healthy, you may go every year or three years or five years, depending on what you're testing. So these, these numbers, these reference ranges, are statistics based on who, everybody who gets tested. So if you're inside the normal range, we really don't know what's wrong with you. We don't know if you're right or not because you're as sick as everybody else. We don't know. If you're outside of the range, then yeah, you're sicker than most people who've gotten that test done. So there's definitely something wrong. But you're, if you're within that range, you know, we, we can't really see the problems. So in my office and in other functional medicine practices, we use what are called functional lab values. They're more sensitive. They reveal problems before they're seen on traditional labs. They allow us to identify subclinical presentations. What we're kind of talking about is, you know, the abnormal, high or low, your doctor's going to catch, but what happens if you fall here or you fall here? You know, those areas are abnormal, but your MD is going to say they're fine. And we want to look at the functional lab ranges and really help us identify subclinical presentations, you know, what's actually causing your diabetes, what's actually causing your nerve damage. You know, were all those tests normal? A couple examples of that, uh, glucose is a good example, for instance. Um, the functional range for glucose is 85 to 99, okay? Uh, LabCorp, actually, they, they just changed it a couple years ago, but for a while, they said normal was 110. I mean, that's, that's pretty crazy in my, in my mind. Uh, but they also still say 65 is normal. So if you know anybody who's hypoglycemic, if you're at a 73 or a 70, yeah, they're not going anywhere. They're lightheaded. They're dizzy. That's, that's, it, but yet that's the normal range. It doesn't make sense. TSH is another big, big example. Have you all had your thyroid checked? Okay. I do a whole lecture on thyroid dysfunction. And we talk about the 10 different thyroid tests. TSH is only one of them. And if you haven't had a full thyroid panel, I'd be happy to run it for you or go to your doctor and make sure they do the full test 
to look for everything, okay? Because this is very important because your thyroid can regulate your nerves. It can, ca it can regulate your blood sugar. It can lead to the neuropathy that you're dealing with. The normal TSH value, excuse me, the functional normal range is 1.8 to 3.0. That's a narrow range. LabCorp says 0 0.4 to 4.5. So if you're 4.2, your doctors are going to say your TSH is fine and they're going to do nothing about it. But you're actually hypothyroid. So depending on where your labs come back, it really helps us identify much more specific problems that are leading to your dysfunction. Cholesterol is another good example. If your cholesterol is low, total cholesterol under 150, that's not good. That most likely means that you're suffering from an autoimmune condition and you have a decreased ability to utilize those fatty acids properly. So it's not a good thing to have low cholesterol. Just like if you're at 200, that's really not that big of a deal. You know, under 200, 150 to 200 is a normal range, but if you're right at 200, that's fine. You know, we can talk to you about a little exercise and, and prevention instead of putting you on a pill that can lead to your neuropathy. In functionally based healthcare, we look at lab findings using these functional values, and we look for different patterns of dysfunction. The areas that I look at include anemias, include sugar regulation, the liver and uh, gallbladder or biliary tree, the thyroid, the adrenals, uh, the gut. You all have heard of something called leaky gut syndrome. Leaky gut syndrome directly contributes to a large percentage of positive symptoms in neuropathy. It comes from infections and autoimmune attacks that make the brain perceive the burning pain. If you're autoimmune, all this other stuff becomes secondary to the immune system. That has to be addressed first and foremost. We find out where your dysfunction is, and then we support those pathways and get them healed. The specific testing that we do includes blood tests, a complete blood panel. It includes sensitivity testing. The adrenal stress index is something that we use. It's a salivary test to look at your cortisol levels. Does anybody here have problems sleeping? Okay, sure. I know, it's like asking, you know, asking a bunch of doctors. Does anybody here go to college? <laughs> okay, so you have problems sleeping, cortisol is probably contributing to it. You should have the highest cortisol level in the morning, lowest in the evening. And your cortisol level, as regulated by your pituitary gland and produced by your adrenals, sets your circadian rhythm. That's your sleep cycle. So if you have problems sleeping, this is probably one of the most important tests that you could ever have done. We want to look at your immune test and your immune panels. We want to actually know what are your T cells, your B cells, what are they doing? Are they attacking your body? Are they regulating the way they should be? You want to look at hormones? You want to look at your neurotransmitter? You want to look for chronic inflammation? You know, all these different things help us identify where your dysfunction is coming from. So if a patient comes back and, and they have an autoimmune attack, why would the body attack your nerves? And that's what we're talking about here, really, is, 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 is your nerves getting attacked because of an autoimmune condition, all right? Typically, we look at two things. We look at stressors. Those stressors can come from certain things. Or we look at something called invaders or active antigens. The stressors lead to something called dysregulation of your immune system. It could be chronic inflammation, okay? It could be bad blood sugar. We've talked about that, obviously, with the diabetes. It could be an adrenal gland problem. Once again, sleep issues. That's usually due to stress as well. Hormonal imbalances. Neurological imbalances. So we talked about that a little bit as well. So these different things can contribute to your immune system attacking your nerves. But at the same time, it could be an active antigen, an invader, you know, sneaking into your body and doing damage. What we're talking about are chronic infections. Bacterial infections, viral infections, fungal infections. These chronic infections could also be parasites. Lake Norman. Okay, you think what's in the lake out there. You know, and if you get a parasite, you got to find them and you got to kill them because it will cause your body to attack itself and it will go right to those nerves, it will go right to the damaged areas and it will make you worse. It could be food, okay? This is an important, important thing to talk about. And there's actually an entire lecture that I'll be doing uh, in mid-February on food sensitivities, specific to gluten, why celiac tests are invalid, okay? So if you've ever been tested for celiac through blood, throw the test away. It means absolutely nothing. 
we can conclude across the board in persons with autoimmune uh, uh, autoimmune thyroid that there's a high prevalence of positive anti gluten or, or positive gluten antibodies. Basically, if somebody has an autoimmune thyroid, then gluten's causing it. Okay. What does this have to do with neuropathy? We'll talk about it in a minute because I've got three more studies I'm going to show you that point to the exact same thing with neuropathy. If you have neuropathy and you are eating wheat, you are making yourself worse. You will never get better if you have those food sensitivities. We can test for that. I can tell you specifically at this point in time, 27 different foods that you may be sensitive to. It's really amazing what the tests are able to do at this point. And they're not that expensive either. They're really not. The testing is actually pretty, it's very affordable and to tell us that information. But, you know, your antigen could be food. It could also be the environment, smog, chemicals. It could be what's called leaky gut syndrome. It could come from medicines that you're taking that are contributing to it. It can come from undigested food. It could come from protozoans, you know, other bugs that are out there, other agents that are out there. So all these different antigens or these different stressors can contribute to your immune system attacking your nerves. So a major part of neuropathy treatment involves, number one, identifying if that's going on. So there's a screening test that we can do to see if your immune system is attacking your body. Once we identify that, then we want to remove the antigens or causes of your dysfunction. Once we remove them, we want to improve the immune system. We do that through simple supplements. You've heard of vitamin D. You've heard of fish oil. Glutathione is another supplement we use that's very, very powerful. I can put glutathione on your feet and you'll immediately feel some of that sensation get, uh, get better. It's, it's a pretty powerful tool to use. Uh, we remove stimulants that are causing your immune system to dysregulate or go dominant. It could be garlic. Hmm. All right could be echinacea or vitamin C. If your immune system is TH1 dominant, those things are not necessarily helping you. It could also be caffeine. Okay, so there's certain things that can actually make you worse that you think are perfectly fine. This is also why a lot of people who take supplements don't get better because the supplements that they're taking may actually be making them worse. We also use other therapies to help support the body as necessary. And we're going to talk about that with our last section. I said before, the main areas we look at, blood sugar, the GI, liver detoxification, anemias, fatty acid metabolism, but autoimmune always trumps everything. So when we're talking about how to evaluate those lab tests, then we want to address your glucose values. We want to look for anemias in blood work. We want to do sensitivity testing to look for not just gluten or wheat, but milk, eggs, soy, yeast. How about you're gluten-free and you still have pain? We've got these new panels that can look for 24 other foods. Quinoa. Have anybody heard of quinoa? Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's like an ancient grain. and it, it Actually, you can get it at every store. It actually tastes pretty good. It's kind of like couscous. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's gluten-free. So it's good for a lot of people. But there are certain people who can't even eat that. Okay, So you know, this test is really, really important. 80% of food sensitivities or allergies cause problems besides the GI. So if you have a food sensitivity, you may not even know it. In fact, somebody who is truly celiac, 60% of celiacs will have no stomach problems at all. It could be making your neuropathy worse. I told you, gluten sensitivity. Gluten sensitivity may be linked to a substantial number of idiopathic neuropathies. Celiac disease is commonly associated with sensory neuropathy and should be considered even in the absence of gastrointestinal symptoms. Celiac disease should be considered in patients with idiopathic neuropathy even when GI symptoms are absent. These studies are within the last seven years, okay? Three different medical journals all showing the exact same thing. The food that you're eating is probably contributing to the pain that you're feeling, the numbness that you have. Leaky gut talk about that again. It's where you have altered or damaged bowel lining. It causes antibiotics, toxins, poor diet, bugs, infections, all these different things lead to holes in your gut. And those holes lead to little inflammatory cells getting out of your GI tract and going right to your nerves and attacking them. 
We talked about the adrenal glands. Now, if you have insomnia, one more time, you want to get this test done. It looks like that. The red lines are normal. What happens if that's you? Yeah, you're wired at night. That's why you can't sleep. And the test tells us where your levels are. The immune panels that we want to look at help us identify if you're autoimmune or not. It's called a TMB lymphocyte. And that test specifically tells us what's going on. We look at cytokines, the actual immune cells, once we identify that. And the hormone panels are important because you know, this estrogen and testosterone progesterone level can lead to attacks on your immune system, which can lead to attacks on your nerves. So in our office, I do a comprehensive neurological and metabolic workup on every neuropathy patient. We're talking about tests to look for how your nerves are functioning. Pupil reflexes, heart rates, looking at your cerebellum, seeing how you walk, seeing if you can identify different places in space, looking at tissue oxygen perfusion. Do you have oxygen in your body? We also recommend labs to help identify metabolic dysfunction with patients. Those labs you may have had done, we, we look and see what you've had done, and we're able to help look at them at a fresh set of eyes and really look at them from a different perspective. And a lot of times we end up saying, okay, that's, we've identified a couple key things that, we, that were there that, that we didn't identify before, but we have to get these additional tests done. And we'll recommend labs to help us figure that out. So what is the solution? We said you've got neuropathy. We said we know where it's coming from. How do we fix it? A large part of that is done by training the brain. Your cerebellum and parietal lobe, like we talked about, need two things to function properly. They need fuel. Fuel comes in the form of glucose. That's why you have neuropathy, because you've got a blood sugar problem. They need oxygen. Also part of the reason why you have neuropathy, because diabetes leads to decreased circulation. So you don't get oxygen to your nerves the way you need to. But your body also needs activation. The old concept of if you don't use it, you lose it. Okay. Well, maybe not an old concept, but that's what we're talking about here. You have to stimulate your nerves in order to have them function. And we do that through what's called brain-based therapy. We do some adjusting if you've been to a chiropractor with patients, but when we're talking brain-based therapy, we're going to use light force, and we're going to adjust one side of your body only. And we're going to identify through our neurological examination where your dysfunction is. Is it your left parietal lobe and your right cerebellum? You know, what's dysfunctioning? And based on that, we're going to help correct it. Additionally, we'll use some really exciting tools that are really cutting edge. The first one is called infrared light therapy. Okay? Infrared light therapy is our pulse infrared light therapy literally restores nerves in your feet. It talks to the nerves in their own language and it literally gets the cells mitochondria to come back to life. This therapy for every one of you will show effectiveness in as little as six visits. We do an examination, a very, very thorough sensory examination to see where your lack of, of uh, sensation is coming from, how severe it is, what nerves are damaged. And then in as little as, t as two weeks, a little six visits with patients, we expect to see those nerves improve from infrared light therapy. It's not just what I see in the office, although I do see it, but it's also the research that's been published. It's an effective treatment option for patients with peripheral neuropathy. We utilize vibration. Whole body vibration allows us to stimulate the dorsal column, the back of your spinal cord, those pathways of nerves that are going from your brain to your feet, it gets them communicated again. There's over 100 medical papers that have been published on vibrations effectiveness. It started with uh, the Russians in space flight uh, back in the, uh, in the 60s and 70s when they were trying to figure out how to prevent osteoporosis with their cosmonauts. And it's, it's really it's used everywhere now. And vibration is a very effective treatment. My, uh, my grandfather uh, has Parkinson's, and he uses a vibration plate every day to help him walk easier. Decompression. This is something we want, want to talk about based on your case, if it's unilateral pain. Uh, spinal decompression therapy is a treatment that allows us to non-surgically fix disc herniations and pinched nerves. It's very effective. Actually, we're talking 87% effective at avoiding surgery. 
And what we use, it, it, you can see a picture of it right there. Uh, we utilize oxygen with our decompression tables. And you actually, it's like a gentle stretch. I mean, patients feel great when they're on it. They get the relief. It's, it's, and it's not, just, uh, it's not just the nerves, but it's also, you know, or, uh, or the discs, but it's also those nerves and getting those nerves firing again. So the whole goal is what can we do to stimulate your nerves? What can we do to get your brain talking to your feet again? If we can find out how to get that working, then, you know, these different tools are going to give you the relief that you're looking for. In my office, all cases are a combination of neurological treatment and metabolic treatment. There's this combination that's required for patients to get better. Like I said, we've treated neuropathy for four years. We started off treating neuropathy from a primarily neurological point of view with therapies. And for those patients that we did not add the metabolic component into it, the results are not as good. You want to do both. By combining therapies, you see really a long-term improvement in health. And what we're talking about is identifying where the dysfunction is. So I've got these three areas here. I've got these three areas there. Metabolic problems, neurological problems. And then we work on treating it. And then over time, you know, we see uh, kind of like, like the, 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 the pie there, the pieces of the puzzle come together. And, you know, the retesting makes sure that we know that we're correcting your problems. And at the end of the day, you, know, you get where you want to be. You get healthy. And, and the person's treated effectively. So how many of you are really fed up? You're at the point where you want to get relief. Okay. What we do in this office is different. I think you can probably tell that from the last, last 50 minutes or so in our lecture. In my own personal life, I make decisions a very certain way. I get all the information I can. And I hope that I've given you guys some good information. I think I lost a couple of you at one point tonight. But uh, hopefully you've learned a lot about neuropathy as a condition, and you've learned a lot of new treatment options that you didn't have an hour ago. I want you guys to ask yourself two questions. I'm about to present a uh, case review offer to you. If you do not act on my offer tonight, I want you to ask yourself what will happen if you do not take advantage of that offer. And I want you to ask yourself, you know, if you decide to act, what will happen? If you decide to do something about your neuropathy, if you decide to do something about your chronic pain, your diabetes, your pinched nerves, your discomfort, what will happen? And then think, wait, if I don't do anything in three years, where do you see yourself? If you do nothing and this progresses, if you don't get help, where do you see yourself? You all know someone who needs a life preserver. For many of you, it's yourself. In my office, I'm looking to help sick people. Who in your family or among your friends, relatives, and coworkers is cursed with neuropathy? If it's you, that's who we're looking to help. If it's somebody else, the doctors, you know, they can't help them. You know, if, if, the, if the medical doctors don't have a solution for it, tell them there's hope. And it's not just for neuropathy. You know, it's, it's like I said earlier, it's thyroid dysfunction, diabetes, fibromyalgia, dizziness, vertigo, stroke, chronic pain, depression, weight gain, fatigue, okay? These different problems, we can help. What you need to know is with my examination, my initial consultation, we do a case review. Any lab work that you've had done, I want. We're going to review everything that you've had. Some patients have had neuropathy for 25 years, you said, 15 years. I see some charts that are this thick that I review before I ever meet with that patient. I will go through your chart and we will figure out what's been done, what's been missed. If you can hold. How do you get all that X lab work? You sign a release for it. Okay. It makes it easy. Yeah, we, we take care of everything for you. Oh, you have to hunt. <laughs> we hunt it down. Well, my staff's good at that, absolutely. We do a full neurological examination. This neurological examination is more detailed than one you've ever had done before. It includes a, quali a quantitative sensory examination. I look at seven different sensations. I look at your reflexes. I look at your brain, your cerebellum. We look and see how your body is communicating with each other's area, with the areas. We look at your blood pressure, your oxygen levels. We look at everything. 
I also do an orthopedic and spinal evaluation to rule in or out spinal complications with your condition. If you've had metabolic tests done, we review them. With that, what we do is a $45 first visit for anybody at our, at our seminars. Normally, that visit would be $245. And what you're looking at is everything we just went over, that initial case review, full examination, review of previous labs, and a report of my findings if I can help you. I'll be honest, if I can't help you, I'll tell you. And we'll get you to somebody who can if, if they exist. But if I can help you, we'll give you options to help get rid of the pain that you're dealing with, to help get rid of the numbness or tingling or lack of sensation, and get your life back. If you're interested in that, you can see Amy and Brittany now. We're done with our lecture. Thank you.